then that bill is sent to the lower house, the House of Representatives, it goes through the same process. Now there are two versions, the versions of the House and the Senate. Which version shall prevail? Under the system, there has to be a so-called conference committee. There are representatives of the Senate and the House, they go into a conference, tapos magkatawaran sila. So that they can produce just one instead of two bills. After that, the bill goes to the President. If he signs it, it becomes a law. If he does not sign it, the Congress can still override his vote, but it's very difficult because you will need two-thirds vote of both houses of the Congress. Suppose the President does not sign the bill and does not veto it either. What happens to the bill? The bill becomes a law after 30 days. It will become a law after 30 days. So that's how a bill becomes a law. Tapos na, summer sa Sinan. Lawmaking is not the only thing that the Senate does. Lawmaking is perhaps not even the most important thing that senators do. Senators discharge the following duties. Number one, lawmaking. But it may not be even the most important thing that we do here. Number two, constituency work. Senators spend a prodigious amount of time helping constituents. Our staff assistants answer letters, make sure people get their retirement checks, and generally show that the members of Congress really care for the people. Often, the lawmaker is so busy with constituents, which is important in getting re-elected, that he or she pays little attention to making laws. In effect, elected senators have partly transformed towards do not initiate many laws. The Senate can powerfully affect the work of government by monitoring government activity to make sure Government is conducted in the nation's interest to make sure that government is honest and not corrupt, to make sure that government is effective. We do this by means of our so-called oversight committees. We oversee different departments of our government and by means of the question hour, when a senator can demand that a cabinet member should come here and subject himself to cross-examination by the senators. Needless to say, this is my favorite part of Senate work. Question hour. Number four, education. One of the least noticed functions of the Senate is the ability to inform and instruct the citizenry on the affairs of government. The Senate is not merely an inputting device taking mass demands and channeling or inputting them into government. The Senate itself creates mass demand by calling public attention to problems. Number five, representation. One of the chief functions of the Senate is to represent the people. Actually, if you really think very hard about it, there is no close match between the characters of senators and those of the people they represent. Diba? Kami yung senador, dapat representatives kami of the people. Di dapat, dahil kami ang kinakatawan ng mga mamamayan, dapat kamukha namin ang mga mamamayan, di ba? Hindi namin kamukha eh. I mean to say, even only in physical appearance, we are so much better dressed than the people we are supposed to represent. We do not even think like them. So how representative is our representative government, do you think? There is no answer to that question. The, que the answer depends upon you. My hope is that most senators feel that they must consider the interests of all their constituents. I am a lawyer. But I should represent more than lawyers. I should represent the other professions as well, the doctors and the architects, the plumbers and the carpenters. I may be graduate, but I should represent not only people who graduate from UP, but people who graduate from other colleges and universities. I have a doctorate, but what about people who don't have doctorates and don't see things the way I do? I have to try and tailor my personality to reflect all of these dimensions so that I can truly be called a representative of the people the decline of Congress. Our Congress is not working the way it is supposed to. It seems to be losing power to the executive, perhaps because of the following reasons. Structural disadvantage. The Congress is characterized by near feudal dispersion of power with weak party discipline and a tendency to deadlock with the executive. Yet it is these same impediments that keep Congress lively and important. The Senate as a whole can talk back to the executive and even override a presidential veto. 
lack of expertise. Few senators are experts on technical, military, economic, or social problems. Hardly any technical experts are elected to the Congress, and few senators are professionally equipped to deal with such technical matters as nuclear power, medical care, international currency fluctuations, and environmental pollution. This problem could be solved if Congress could generate its own data through its accounting, research, and budget offices. These offices should attempt to provide independent evaluations and data to lessen the dependence of Congress on the executive. Another, another reason for the decline of Congress, psychological disadvantage. The citizenry of our country is more impressed with the president than with Congress. There, this may be caused by a deep human need to respond to a single leading personality. A president can have charisma, but who ever heard of a charismatic senate? Next problem, the absentee problem. If you visit the senate in session, you might be disappointed, for usually the chamber is nearly empty. After all, most of the time, senators do not have to be present. They have a lot of other things to do, helping and visiting constituents, giving speeches to interest groups, and sitting on communities. Why bother listening to speeches in the chamber? They are not likely to change anyone's mind, and everyone pretty much knows their contents in advance. Privileged speeches are meant for the media. They're not really meant for the other senators. Thus, there's the phenomenon of one senator delivering a speech for the entirely empty senate. Absent most of the time, the senator is really needed only to vote. And sometimes it's not even needed to vote if there's already a majority. Last problem, lack of turnover. This is the problem I want to call your particular attention to. In our country, members of Congress tend to become career, lifetime senators and congressmen. Once elected, they usually get re-elected. This means it is difficult for fresh, young blood with new ideas to enter Congress. And on the average, members of Congress are pretty old, in their 50s. What happens to democracy when an elected senator representative is able to go around the law, which imposes a limitation on his term of office? In the bank, Congressman Quedin, three times then, three years each time. He can only run three times. And each time he wins, he has a term of three years. No? So when he reaches his ninth year, yan ang sinasabi nilang nag-graduate na siya. Because under the Constitution, he cannot run for congressman anymore. So what does he do? Anong ginagawa nila sa mga probinsya? Tell me. What do they do to go around the law, to circumvent the law? The law says you can only hold office for three terms of three years each or a total of nine years. After that, you can no longer be elected. But if one term passes by, you can run again. So what do they do for the one term? Hmm? They run for some other office. They run for governor, for mayor, for councilor, for barangay.